not walk on the way. It is the word you hear that cleanses your mind. When your mind has been cleansed, your life is holy. If you are not taught who Christ is, you cannot live an effective Christian life. There is no other honor greater than that of sonship. Worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil. Relationship with God is a gift. Fellowship is a choice. The true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others. What you pursue is an expression of what you desire. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 and 17. All right, can we read together, everybody? I like everyone to read. One, two, three, go. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. 17. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The Gospel of Christ, chapter 2. And uh, the, the subtopic of chapter 2 is the power of the power unto salvation. This just will help you when you are studying your notes. All right. Gospel of Christ, chapter 2. The power of God unto salvation. Amen. Okay. As I've always explained to you, I've said something which I like to always say so you can have a refreshing in your mind. Last week we handled chapter one of this um, subject and we're going to go in deeper today by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit through the grace he gives us. Amen. The first thing I've made you understand is that the major purpose of the scripture is to capture the opinion of God concerning the affairs of men and his creation. Everything that God has created God has revealed his opinion about them in the scripture. Do you understand me? Which means, and don't forget the Bible says in Psalm 103 verse 7, unto Moses God revealed his work, but unto Moses God revealed his ways. I'm sorry. But unto the people God revealed his work. Now, it is your knowledge of the hidden ways of God that provoke your experience of the public works of God. It is your knowledge of the hidden ways of God that provoke your experience of the public works of God. There are things you must know for you to have certain dimensions of graces and glory in the kingdom of God. Do you understand me? And for you to know that thing, you need to consult the scripture. I want you to understand that when it comes to knowing the mind of God, you don't need to go to heaven to know what God thinks. Everything that God thinks is in the Bible. You don't need to pray, I want to go to heaven. You don't need to go to heaven to know God's mind. It's not important. No. God has made sure that within the scripture is captured the entirety of God's counsel and purpose for all humanity. Within the scripture. Everything concerning your life, there is something in the Bible that handles it. So, when the devil wants to hinder men from experiencing the glory of God, he manipulates them to despise the scripture. People that have no value for the scripture are those who will never be honored by God. They will never have access to that which is for them. So, if there is one thing which you must bring your heart back upon, is the gospel of Christ. We live in times because of too much of demonic attack and the needs of men. There is a possibility that if you are not careful, you'll be deceived. Jesus said in the last days, many false prophets will rise and by many signs and wonders will deceive many and to try to deceive even the elect. We understand therefore that one symptom to discern that a minister, a minister is a false prophet is that he lacks the depth of the revelation of Christ. Because false prophet can prophesy. They can heal the sick, they can raise the dead, but they cannot reveal Christ. Because the revelation of Christ is the privilege given only to men who are called by God and filled with the Spirit. It's not, it's not reading the Bible. It's not going to Bible school. Paul said in Ephesians 3, he said, A grace was given to me to make the mystery known. You cannot, you cannot take the grace and put on yourself. It must be given from God. Are you understanding me? So you need to pay attention to the gospel. 
You need to pay attention to what we teach because we have entered the last days. And Bible says in when, when Daniel was receiving the vision for the last days, because in Daniel chapter 7, 8, 9, 10, all he saw was the vision of the last days. He said, In the last days, he said, and he will rise, seeking to deceive many. But they that know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. They that know their God, not they that know God, they that know their God. It speaks of fellowship. It speaks of relationship with God. Can I tell you something? Hmm. Dimensions of God are only captured and introduced to the earth realm by consistent fellowship with God. There is something in God that if you fellowship with him, you will capture it. This thing of, in my family, uh, people don't marry, uh, people are dying. Leave this thing. If you fellowship with God, you will capture something. I've said to you, if your grandfather could bring a curse in your family, are you not man enough to bring a blessing? You must understand there's a responsibility on your shoulder. If you give yourself to consistent fellowship, there is something you will capture for a generation. And Ayakadika, and your relevance in the purpose of God in a generation is a function of your dimension of him you have captured there are many men of God there are many churches but not every man of God is used for every purpose of God God knows those who have been received a certain realm of his power and his glory stop living your life anyhow refuse to be empty become a man and woman that is a carrier of a realm of God because when you meet people it's not your grammar they want to hear it is the power that your grammar introduces that will help them so Paul says the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk but power and he says I didn't come to you with the enticing words of man's wisdom but I came with the demonstration of the spirit and power so Paul began by saying I'm not ashamed of the gospel this is a man who when Jesus appeared to him and sent him to preach the first time he preached he had to leave the city through a basket yet he said I'm not ashamed of the gospel this is a man that entered a city and healed a man who was born lame the man who was born lame stood up and walked and when they came to worship him he denied the people took stones and stoned Paul and the same Paul said again I'm not ashamed of the gospel this is a man that casted the demon out of a girl and they put Paul in prison chained him hands and feet and the same man said I'm not ashamed of the gospel look at what he went through he was beaten for the gospel he was rebuked for the gospel naked for the gospel ashamed for the gospel yet a man will still stand and testify despite everything I've gone through because of God I'm not ashamed of him but there are people who have left church because their cause she broke because the man that's supposed to marry you say you will not marry you again you were so angry with God for you God has failed you even if God were to write an exam you cannot be the examiner even if God was to write an exam you cannot be the one that will mark his script can you mark the script of God he said, who are you man to instruct your maker? We are ashamed of God. A man called Paul that was attacked by a demon. Do you understand? Attacked by a demon from hell. Satan delegated one of his captains to Paul. And the demon afflicted Paul's body. Paul prayed to God three times. God said, I will not take the demon away. Yet the man still confessed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Are you ashamed of are you ashamed of God? To be ashamed of the gospel means to deny Jesus by your words and works in times of trial. To be ashamed of the gospel is to deny Jesus by your words and your works in times of trial. There are things that happen to your life. The reason why Satan brings them is to make you deny your God. Jesus said in Luke 12, 9, he said, whoever is ashamed of me before men. So there are people who are ashamed of God. So he looked to heaven and he says, whoever denies me before men, I will deny him before my father. God, he looked to heaven. He said, whoever is ashamed of me and my words 
people deny God because of trouble that is why if you read the whole point of the story of Job is to show that a man can be consistent with God in the midst of trial and temptation I beg to tell everyone here with all humility to whatever you have gone through in God I don't believe any of us has gone through what Job went through that a man lost seven sons and three daughters in one day lost billions business what billions in one day his body was afflicted with the cancer of the flesh in one day yet in such kind of circumstance the man said I will not deny God even his wife said why don't you deny God every trial and temptation is an attempt by Satan to give you a reason to be ashamed of Christ and the gospel no be now they go church why be say your man don't leave you what will you say no man you go church how come your business need to prosper. You must build that fortitude and mature not to base your love for God on the things He gives you. So you come to a point. Hmm. They said every man should bow to the king. This guy said, King, may you live forever. Sorry to the idol. He said, King, the God we serve is able to save us. Yeah. But even if he does not save us, notice the word even if. Means we are prepared to die for our faith. We are not ashamed of our God. There are many people, Satan used a problem to shut their mouth. They can no longer preach again. They remember something they went through. Listen, there is a possibility. You can make boast of God in your job site. Make boast of God in your school. There's something bad only happens to you. That thing which happened is the devil trying to tell you that you didn't believe well. We saw in Luke chapter 9 from verse 39 to 42, a man said, Jesus, my son has a demon. And Jesus said, bring him to me. He said, verse 42 says, while they were coming to Jesus, the spirit threw him down. To do what? To discourage the man. Every time the devil notices that your heart is set to pursue God, he makes your life a target for attack. This is your thing of, I, I just live fine. You know, Master, pray. When you start praying, you will see what will happen. And I said to you that the outrage and the outburst of the kingdom of hell against you is a proof that your faith is shaking them. Once your faith begins to wreak havoc, I'm telling you, they will reply you with everything they have in their arsenal. When the spirit saw, because demons in nature are possessive, and possessive things don't like to lose their property when the spirit saw that the child will be delivered so there is a demon that held your family for years now that the demon sees that you are becoming consistent with church he has to enter your life and look for something you love and begin to shake it for where a man's treasure is there will his heart be when the demon notices that you love your business he will go to your business and break it because because he knows what when he touches what you love you will be offended with God that is why to secure your fellowship with God you must fully commit your heart to him and nothing in this world if you love God because he healed you I'm sorry some people prayed for healing and died so you don't move like that with God some people prayed for prosperity and they never became rich when you are walking with God don't put your love on anything your wife can become a subject of attack when Satan sees that that you see this is the way touching Satan is a monitoring spirit he said he left Jesus after tempting him Bible says look forward to it he left Jesus waiting for an opportune time so Satan attacks you if you stand he, he attacks your business you stand he said leave him they study you say, this, this girl she, she has a problem her problem is marriage they now begin to resist. All that thing is doing. But Paul said, I have been beaten for the gospel. I have been whipped. One time he had an accident in the sea, 14 days, no, in the sea. He came up, a viper beat him. How can God treat an apostle like that? But yet, in all these things, he said, I'm not ashamed. This is the testimony that I want to have. Not that I had cars or jet, no. That despite what the devil did, I have never taken my love out of God because of what happened. Blessed is he who is not offended in me. 
offense will come because Satan can delay the things you are looking for but once your heart is set for the Lord the things he does not give you does not stop your love for him where is your love for God where has your prayer life gone you're offended I fasted I fasted God didn't answer so in one corner of your heart there is an, there is an idea God has failed me God has not failed you has not failed you. So Paul said, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. These are men who were crucified. They took Peter and his wife, Apostle Peter and his wife. They crucified his wife first. And she was crying. She said, Peter, he told her, he said, remember Christ. My God. Go and watch a documentary. He said, remember Christ. And they crucified. When they came to Peter, when they want to crucify him, he said, no, you cannot crucify me my Lord. Crucify me upside down. He refused to be crucified like this, like Christ. He said, put my head down. I cannot. He said, I'm not worthy to die like my Savior. What did this man know? That Stephen will be preaching and they take stones and they are stoning him. And then he said, Father, forgive them. He was not ashamed of the gospel that preaches love, even though people hated him. Look at what we have become today. We are moving in anger, bitterness, unbelief. Why? Because we are ashamed of the gospel. Once you start hating your brother in Christ, you are ashamed of the gospel because the gospel is love. Stephen stood there. He was tested, my God. A man was tested. They pick up stones. I believe you should have called for fire. I believe you should have called for lightning. He saw the Lord Jesus himself standing. It means Jesus was at the position to come and defend him. He said, Lord, no, don't kill them. These people don't know you. If I die now, I'll come to heaven. If they die, they'll go to hell. And a man who has had an insight into the torment of hell who not wish it for the worst of his enemies I'm telling you you don't know what you are saying you don't know what you are saying Father forgive them to his last dying moment he stood for God he stood for love he stood for peace don't say no me and those are good but that vex I will change something is wrong if you are good be good if you are bad be bad let's know how to pray for you are you with me now to move ahead I gave you three facts about the gospel right I said number one the gospel of Christ is the spiritual system through which Christ is made manifest unto all men 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 10 Galatians 3 verse 1 and Luke 24 verse 13 to 35 2 Timothy 1 10 Galatians 3 1 Luke 24 13 to 35 the gospel of Christ is the spiritual system through which Christ is made manifest unto all men. Now, I wouldn't explain this much because I've explained last week, so you can go back and study last week's message to understand. Are you with me? Just want to refresh your mind. I've explained to you that when Jesus rose from the dead, in our human wisdom, it was easier for him if he just appeared and said, Bam, bam, behold, I'm alive. Let's think about it. Imagine I told you that I was watching a, a debate and a man said, there is no Jesus. If Jesus is alive, let him appear now. Jesus did not appear. And he will never appear. When Jesus rose from the dead, there was a lie in Israel. They lied that his body was stolen. It, for me, it was easier for him to appear in the sky and say, I am alive. No. The only system through which God has ordained for Christ to be known by men is by the preaching of the gospel. If you are only wanting to be praying to see a person appear and say, I am Jesus, you will soon be deceived. It is time to go back and base your faith. You know, there are people who are angry because right now they pray, they pray, and they no longer see visions or dreams. You have not backslidden. When God wants to structure your faith in the world, he withdraws from you the grace of visions and revelations. You know, before you just leave one thing, you see angel, you see heaven. Now God says, now nah, read Bible. And when people are not mature, listen to me, can I tell you something? I beg you, don't look for God in your dream. Look for God in the Bible. Don't say, no, God never has shown me. These are people die like that, like a joke. There are people who, they will pray and they want to go and sleep fast. They want God to come. I beg, I repeat, don't look for God in your dream. 
you may be deceived look for God in the Bible look for God in his word there are people who because you have not seen a dream about what is happening in your family you have no if the Bible says by my stripes you are healed God does not come to show me a dream where I am healed I believe what the Bible has said if you focus only on your dream you will be walking in unbelief when you ought to walk in faith we saw in Luke 24 verse 13 35 Jesus when he rose from the dead he said he appeared to them but they did not know him they did not know him. And he says he began talking to them. The Bible says, Jesus Christ. Where he looked, did he? Take on verse uh, 28. Luke 24, verse 28. He said, And he opened the scripture, beginning from Moses, Genesis, to Malachi. He said, He explained about himself. If Jesus can use the Bible to preach about himself, who are you not to use the Bible? He used the Bible. He preached. You could have just said, bam, bam, I am Christ. Behold the glory that is on me. No. He knew that if you want to move by visionary experiences, I tell you the truth, your faith will not be strong. And the Bible says, when you walk with them, they didn't know it was him. He said, from the scripture, he expounded everything concerning him, made himself known to them. And the Bible says, he vanished from their sight. He did not disappear. He vanished from their side. It may interest you to know that in this place now Jesus is here. But the problem is this He has vanished from our physical sight because we walk by faith and not by sight. So Jesus is here, but He's operating in the realm where only the eye of your spirit can see Him. And for the eye of your spirit to see Him, you need to know Him by the word. But you want to know Him by dream. I dreamed He was wearing a white dress with a blue cap and a yellow shoe. And I was like, I'm telling you, I'm a prophet. Listen, don't you think I don't have vision? even deceive yourself I have visions which if I tell you some you will not believe by God's grace I've been to heaven I've seen hell I've seen the Lord I've seen in the Gabriel I've seen in Jamaica but I'm telling you I saw all those things it did not increase my faith even one bit I saw the Lord after I was still living in fear until I began to build myself from the word God has not ordained if God appears to any man is to give you an assignment not to be your faith. Everyone will get faith from the Bible. What is an apostle? So God can appear to an apostle of God and say, you do this. Apostle, people go back and read Bible for no Jesus. You don't know him by visions. Number two, I said the gospel of Christ is the spiritual technology through which men are born again into the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 4, 15. 1 Peter 1, 23. So we understand from that therefore that if you have not heard the gospel of Christ you are not born again. It doesn't matter what you heard. Do you understand me now? It is important you hear the gospel of Christ for you to be born again. That gospel is not for entertainment. Nowadays uh, now listen, I want to say something. I'm sorry. Forgive me. But please, you know my heart. I don't speak against pastors. But this is it. There is a corruption. The Bible says in Revelation 2.20, it says, and Jezebel teacheth my servants. Servants of God who were taught by Jezebel. It now says, they now hold to the doctrine of Balaam. So there are people in church, they are, what they teach is not the gospel of Christ, it's the doctrine of Balaam and Jezebel. The gospel of things. The gospel of cars. The gospel of houses. The gospel of which is dying. Is there a part of which is that? Yes, there is. But all these things do not save. The gospel of how hot the hell is, that's not the gospel of Christ. The only gospel that saves, that two men are born again. Listen, you are not born again because you came out for altar call. If you didn't hear the right message, you are not born again. In Acts chapter 19, he said, and Paul met seven disciples. He asked them, did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believe? They said, ah, we don't know Holy Spirit. These are Christians. Or believer, they say we don't know Holy Spirit. He stopped. He said, "Come." He said, "What did you hear?" He said, "Ah, we heard the the, God, the teaching from John." He took them now. He now taught them about Jesus, baptized them again, and they received the Holy Ghost. Many people in church don't have the Holy Spirit because they have not heard about Christ. It this is the teaching of the Gospel of Christ is the only system to introduce the Holy Spirit in the midst of men. When you begin to, why Peter still spoke these words, the Holy Ghost came. 
I know you have problem. I know you want me to talk about your problem, but I'm telling you the truth. It is more important for you to hear about Jesus Christ. Do you understand me? So when you hear that gospel, that is why there are people who come to church and they never came out for altar call. They sit down, but you notice you can now overcome anger. You overcome pride. You overcome immorality. You know why? The Holy Ghost has come. He now begins to strengthen you and draw you into the realms of God that you must hear the gospel. The, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. the greatest thing that Papa God can do for you is to give you a pastor after his heart. I'm telling you. The man who teaches you the ways of Christ is more relevant than the man who prophesies to you and gives you miracles. Take it from me. I prophesy. Don't look at me like that. I prophesy. By God's grace, I do miracles, I do signs. There are people who were healed of cancer in this church. They're no longer coming to this church. They were healed of cancer. Came and testified. I'm healed of cancer. They have gone. They are not coming to church. But they were healed of cancer. But there are some of you. I've never called your name by prophecy. But by the word of God, I've established you in Christ. So you are a fruit of my level. Not the person who received the miracle. Where are they? They are not here. But you are here. Far beyond what I prophesied. By the gospel of Christ, I have introduced you to God and introduced God to you. There's nothing more than that. Lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord, for receiving me. Number three, the gospel of Christ is the spiritual strategy for obtaining an inheritance in the kingdom of God. First Thessalonians 2, 14, Acts 20, 32. The gospel of Christ is the spiritual strategy to obtain an inheritance in the kingdom. The only way to have an inheritance in the kingdom of God is by giving yourself to the gospel of Christ. Are you understanding me? If you don't give yourself to the gospel of Christ, you have no inheritance. When we speak of inheritance, there is life, health, prosperity, all those things. They are part of what? Listen, in God's ki kingdom, it's allocated something great for you. Colossians 1 13, he said, He has made us partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. What is the inheritance? Where is it? In the kingdom. So, how do you enter the kingdom? By being born again. Unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom. How are you born again? By hearing the gospel. So you hear the gospel, you become born again, you enter the kingdom, you obtain your inheritance. I pray for somebody here. That which God prepared for you, may you begin to enjoy it fully. Amen. Your amen did not come out loud as I expected. Amen. Now, let's proceed. Before I define what the gospel of Christ is, one thing I want to lay emphasis on. Hmm. It is impossible, impossible for you to experience the profit of the gospel if you don't honor the carriers of the message. Listen to what I'm telling you. There is something about this gospel that angels cannot preach. Any angel that appears and preach to you, please look for Cain and whip him. He's not an angel. The Bible says in Acts chapter 11, 13 to 14, bring it up please. There was a man called Cornelius, Acts chapter 10, sorry, from verse 1 to 3. He says he prayed to God and God sent an angel. In, in Acts 11, 13 to 14, Peter said, Cornelius said, send for Peter, bring it up. He, and he told us how he seen, he seen an angel standing in his house. Who said, what did the angel tell him? Send men to Joppa, call for Simon, whose son name is Peter. Continue. Who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved? Now stop, please stop, stop, stop. Angel came from heaven. From where? Where is God? Where is Jesus? He came from God's throne. Came on earth, yet could not preach the gospel. He had to call for Peter, a man that has weaknesses. I not like Peter. Peter of again anger. Call for Peter. Be careful with pride. Don't allow the humanity of the messenger make you despise the genuineness of his message. You may not like sometimes the way I talk, but I swear to God I'm a prophet. You may not like sometimes the way I behave. Yes, me too, I am a man. All of us, we are WIP, work in progress. As God is working on you, he's working on me. That's why me too as a pastor, I submit myself to the authority of Apostle Johnson to the man so I can be taught and structured as I teach and structure you because I cannot mentor you if I am not mentored myself. Are you understanding me? 
But an angel came, a perfect being. Angels at John saw angel in heaven. John knee down. John Apostle John. He lied down. Only glory and light. But with all that splendor and glory and brightness and wings and perfection. Yet common men, fishermen, men with weaknesses are the ones that God says these are the ones to preach the gospel. So keep waiting for an angel to come to heaven. You will never see him. I repeat again. Paul said, if, if an angel appear and preach to you another gospel, let him be a cause. A man cause angel. I'm saying it to you. Any angel that preaches to you, if you're in this age here, and tells you anything contrary to the doctrine of Christ, let him be a cause. He's not from God. He's a demon. That's why, no matter you pray, pray, God will tell you, go and look for my servant. You pray, pray, pray. Oh, sickness, sickness. In your dream, you begin to see prophet Kevin. God is saying, go to him. He will tell you words by which you'll be saved. So this gospel is carried by men, not by spirit with wings. But we are despising the message because of the, of the infirmity on the messenger. We look at the weaknesses of the man. Please, be spiritual. He said, no, no man according to the flesh. If not, you will miss the strength of his spirit. And I ask myself, how can you call for Peter and send Peter a man? You, you are an angel. You came from heaven. You are perfect. How do you send for a human being? Have you not read in Luke chapter 16, verse 27 and 30? He said, two people went to hell, Lazarus and the rich man. In hell, the rich man said, Abraham, send Lazarus from heaven to go and preach. Abraham said, they have the law and the prophets. He said, let them hear them. The, man, the, the rich man said, no, the rich man. He said, no, Papa Abraham. If somebody comes from the dead, from heaven, and tell them they will believe. And Abraham said, if they don't believe the Bible and the prophets, they will not believe an angel. By that thing, Abraham as a patriarch revealed that in the kingdom of God, there is no privilege given to angels to preach the gospel. It's not there. Those of you who don't like us, you're once a perfect being. I'm sorry for you. You have to manage me. Because right now, I'm the, I'm the one through whom God will show himself to you. So he now says something I love. Jesus says something in Luke chapter is it 10, 10, 16. He said, whoever, when he sent the apostle, he said, whoever listens to you, listen to me. Those of you who are going to a mountain, I want to hear God speak to my left ear, speak to my right ear. He said, if you listen to prophet Kevin, you have listened to him. What do, which Bible are we reading? He who hears you, hears me. If you hear Kevin, you have heard Jesus. To separate Jesus from his servant is immaturity. He who hears you, hears me. Bring it up. And he will reject you, reject me. So to reject me is to reject the one that sent me. Do you understand what I'm preaching? But because you don't like the way I talk, you don't like my character, you don't like this, you have petty things, you're looking at my flesh. No. Yes, my flesh may be imperfect, but my spirit is perfect. Now, I'm not saying this to boast of imperfection because of course I submit myself to the Lord and he will structure me and with time I will get better. But don't be that foolish. I'm sorry. Don't be foolish to despise the strength of my spirit because of the weakness of my flesh. He who hears you, hears me. He who hears you, hears me. Jeremiah 3, 15, 16. I will give them shepherds after my heart that will feed them with knowledge and understanding. Look at that again. People that will feed them. So God wouldn't come and feed you. Let me show you something. Give me Romans chapter 10, right? Romans 10. 10 to 15. We'll see something there very important. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Continue. Read with me. For this, read now. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Continue. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Mm -hmm. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14, trouble. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Not without an angel. Without a preacher. I am the preacher. 
So your salvation is dependent on who you hear. Now go to verse 15. Now here. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are their feet, not their wings. Their feet, their feet, their feet of those who preach the gospel of peace who bring glad tidings of good things. God says our feet is beautiful. Our head may be ugly. Our feet is beautiful. I don't care how you see it. We don't need to do makeup on our feet. He said our feet is beautiful because we are carriers of the message of Christ. So that is why the greatest target in every assembly is the pastor. Matthew 26, 31. I will strike the shepherd. The sheep will scatter. In 1 Kings 22, 31. Let me see 31. Read. Now, the king of Syria had commanded the 32 captains of his chariots fight with no one small or great but only with the king of Israel how can you they say enter AGM don't fight don't fight pastors don't fight workers target prophet Kedim. touch his body touch his finance touch his marriage touch his life target him they say fight with no one if there's something you must not forget to do as Paul said he said pray for us beyond giving prophetic seed to your pastor pray for him because your prophetic seed cannot save his life but Paul said this shall turn out for my deliverance through the supply of your spirit and your prayer pray for me every day Second Thessalonians 3 1 he said pray for us that we may be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men and that the word of God may be glorified Satan knows that I am a carrier of the word so he must make me a target there are people that come to church weary tired sick and just standing here and preaching, they live with joy, live with peace. Souls are saved from January to now. In our crusades, we are one over 2,500 souls in less than five months. You think we, don't, we cannot count those who have been healed? He is for healing, is more than three, four, five thousand homes restored, prophetic words released. Satan says, Leave everybody, target prophet, David. follow him in his dream. Come when he wakes, come. He said, fight 32 soldiers. There were 30,000 people in the camp of the king. He said, leave 30,000. If you bring one king down, 30,000 people will fall. If the hands of Moses go down, Joshua will lose the war. Are you with me now? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Philippians 1, 22. I know we like this thing of 21. To leave his Christ to die his game. Let's read that scripture. We like to read it, but you have never understood it. Philippians 1 21. 21, please. Read. Please read, don't write, read first. For me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Stop. For who? <laughs> For him, Paul. To live is, to die is. Continue. But read now. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean food from my labor. Yet, what shall I choose? I cannot tell. Continue. For I am hard pressed between the two. Ha having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. He said, listen, it, listen, he said, it is far better for a pastor to die and go and meet Jesus than be preaching and jumping every Sunday service. Read that, but it is far better. It is far better for a pastor to be in heaven than to be praying for people doing cancer. He says it's far better. After he has left, he says he should go. But hear what the man of God says. Continue now. I want you to see this thing and get this revelation now. Read. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for who? For who? For who? Please give me another version there. But for your sakes, for whose sake? It is better that I continue to live. Are you reading this thing? A pastor falls into immorality. For our sake, it's better for him to be restored. Because if he falls and then die, we have lost something in the gospel. It is our pride and jealousy that makes us kill men we cannot replace. That makes us fight men that are irreplaceable in the systems of God because of jealousy or because of an error. Peter was denying Jesus. Jesus said, when you come back, strengthen your brother. <laughs> Peter is denying Jesus. Jesus said, overcome that thing. 
because in years to come there are other people that will fall you are the one to raise them up so even Jesus can overlook the weakness of a pastor because he knows his strength is a strength for a whole nation he said it's better for you that I live but there are people for them they don't think their pastor's life is profit to them you have to be wise you pray for your pastor look at churches where their pastor died and see what happened no matter how glorious the church, see what happened when he died forget this thing of you can have people that replace you some people are leave this thing some people are irreplaceable don't leave that he say no matter how many sons you raise there, there's, there's something in a man is only in that man Elijah replaced Elijah but on the mountain of salvation it is Elijah that came his replacement did not come you will see how the sheep will scatter things will happen there Th pray for your pastor to be alive if your pastor fall fast and pray for him to rise refuse to lose your pastor you have lost a realm in God you have to be smart refuse it he said it is better for you that I live but now in this wicked generation pastor died people change church do they care even when they hear rumor not that he's dead they hear the rumor say don't die they just change church at once and they're going on the inside now what a shame these are men that risk their life for you you came to church and there is a python fighting your family and a man comes and fight a python that kill your father i'm confronting things that kill your family members i'm risking my life delivering you i don't owe you deliverance i don't owe you anything but you come to church and people are possessed with liars possessed with serpents serpents that have killed their family members and a man of God will risk his life and stand and pray for you and when he's challenged you can't pray for him when he's challenged you can't stand with him you don't understand that Paul says it is better for you that I live Jesus said it he said when the bridegroom is taken then you will fast <laughs> there are some things you are enjoying now because of he said when the father is taken you will know fasting and prayer they said Jesus why do your disciples not fast? He said, because are they? When I go, go, they go confirm and say, life no be easy. So there is an honor. I'm, I'm teaching you. There is an honor you need to attribute to every carrier of the gospel. These are bringers of life. Oh my God. Do you know in Acts chapter 5 verse 19 to 22, he said, Peter and John were put in prison. Eh? Bring it up. And the Bible says, the angel, an angel came and released them and said, Go and stand and preach. Why should angel move them? For Why angel not go preach? That at night, but at night, and put from verse 18. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Verse 19. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison door and brought them out and said, Year 20. Everybody read it loud. Read it. Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. Ay, 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 ay. Man, that Listen, these guys were in prison. There are many other men in Jerusalem, but there are few apostles. The angel could go and preach in the market. He said, it's not my possibility. Have you not read in Acts chapter 8 that there was a utopian union that was going back to his, to his country? And angel said to Philip, go and preach to that man. Why the angel did not go and preach? Please, I want you to bow your head and pray for your pastor. If you are watching me around the world, whoever your pastor is, you are watching me on Facebook, on YouTube, make a comment, pray for your pastor. That the Lord will preserve his life, preserve his health, preserve his mind, preserve his marriage. Father, I pray for Apostle Johnson Suleiman that your hand will be strong on him. Strengthen him for he is the right, he is the hand, he is the man of your right hand. Strengthen him, oh God, he is the man of your right hand. Strengthen his mind, his will, his love, his faith. Strengthen everything in his life, oh God. Shield him, shield him from every attack on the left, the right, in front, and behind. Be a hedge around him, around his wife, his children, his family, everything he has on every side. May the devil not be able to touch him. Oh God, preserve him. Pray. In Jesus' mighty name. 
So what is the gospel? Number one, the gospel of the gospel of Christ is the good news of who Christ is and what he has done. I'm, I'm doing it simple for you. The gospel of Christ, number one, is the good news of who Jesus Christ is and what he has done. Show me 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 to 4. That it is simple. Now I'm defining the gospel for you, right? Read. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive and in which you stand. They stand where? They, sta they stand where? In the gospel. So where will you stand? Will you be sick? Why? You stand in the gospel. Will you be poor? Why? Will you be living in sin you stand in, so when you stand in the gospel you live a life that agrees with the scripture let's continue with that place there something there let's continue yeah by which ah, yeah, 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 yeah. by which also you are saved now yeah 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 if if you hold fast that word which I preach to you unless you believe in vain now verse 3 see now hear the gospel now for I deliver to you First of all, that which I also received. This is the gospel. Hear the gospel. That Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Verse 4. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Verse 5. And that he was seen by seven. Well, anyway, end of verse 4. You see the gospel? Jesus died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again. He ascended. Simple. It's not complicated. We're not talking about heaven, Orion, Pleiades, Monoliades, Monoclates. It's simple. The gospel tells you who Jesus is and what he has done for you. So every time you hear me preach or anybody preach, if the content of the message does not give you knowledge of who Christ is and what he has done, it's not the gospel of Christ. It can just be a good message. But if it is the gospel, Christ is the focus of it. It tells you that this is what Jesus did and this is who he is. He is love. He is merciful. He is faithful. And he has saved you. Because your faith is a function of your knowledge of who Christ is and what he has done for you. That's how faith comes. Many people do not have faith because they are, they are reading the wrong things. Once you begin to hear about Jesus, who he is to you, what he has done for you, faith comes. That's where faith comes. So people can be impressed for church for 10 years, there is no faith. You know why? They have not heard about Jesus. They keep hearing about their problem. There's something I want to say now. Now, I'm a prophet. So, don't judge me what I want to say. With prophecy, we can expose problem. But teaching is to give solution, not to talk about problem. What I'm saying now, you may not understand, but I'll explain to you. Give me Numbers 21, verse 6 to 8. Numbers 21, verse 6 to 8. Okay. Take from verse 5. <laughs> and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and our soul hates this worthless bread. Manao, complain. What, what did God do? So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people, and many of the people of Israel died. What they, did they die? What killed them? Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Notice, against you. Don't speak against pastors who pray to the Lord. Now, nah, please follow me. I beg, catch this thing. Then we are fine for today. Pray to the Lord that, that the Lord will do what? Listen, what is the prayer point? Pray to the Lord that He will take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed, he prayed that prayer. Lord, take the serpents away from them. Look at the response of Yahweh Elohim. This is deep. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is beaten, when he looks at it, shall live. 
no, next verse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Read. So Moses made the bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was, if, a, if the serpent, what happened? What happened now? What happened? Now stop. Go to John chapter 3. Verse 14. To 16. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Read now Jesus. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Verse 15. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now we are going to discuss. You know this verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let us talk. Everybody look at me. Listen. Let us talk. Serpents were biting people. So in the church of Moses, he has about 3 million members. That is just an estimate. And there are serpents. Let's say 3 million serpents biting them. So this one in church, her own serpent is cancer. This one only is HIV. This one only is poverty. This one her serpent is, is rejection. Different serpents biting them. So they came and said, Moses, pray that God should take away the serpent. Hear God's answer. God says, I will not take away the serpent. That's not the reply. He said, Moses, make another serpent. He was trying to make a symbolic representation of Christ. He said, make a serpent. Anyone that looks at it shall live. Now, I want us to talk. The serpent on the floor is biting your feet. You feel it physical, biting you. Poison enter you. And you look behind you. You see your neighbor who died because the same poison killed them. Then Moses tells you, Look at the serpent you cannot touch and leave. <laughs> My God. Look at the serpent you cannot touch and leave. Yes. What am I saying? Man of God is cancer. Man of God is kidney. Man of God is liver. Man of God is arthritis. Man of God is diabetes. Man of God, we don't marry a family. Man of God, we are poor. No matter the snake, God said, Prophet Kevin, come and lift up Christ in church. Anyone that attends service, if they can look at what you are put, ah, yeah, that's he gather. He said, Lift up Christ. Whoever, not, not some, whoever looks shall live. And to look, Jesus interpreted that to look means to believe. So it does not matter what has held you bound. If you look at him, his name is Jesus, meaning Yahweh, my salvation. The Savior. He said, whoever looks. Now I ask myself, I said, Lord, how come living serpents were biting them? And you asked Moses to put a dead serpent on a pole. Let's think of it. Between dead snake and living snake, you will fear which one? Living serpent is biting them. Then God said, put a dead serpent. Then, then God said, whoever look. To look means to believe, not so. To believe, he says, for with their heart one belief. I want you to be following me. To look means what? To believe. To believe means to look. What does it mean to look? So, to believe. We believe with what? Now look at this. Don't miss this. Don't write. Listen. Listen to me. A living serpent is biting them. God says, look at the one which is dead. <laughs> if you cannot see that cancer died on the cross, if you cannot see that HIV died on the cross, if you cannot see that poverty died on the cross, he said, look at the serpent which is dead and know that this serpent which is biting you is dead. He says, once you realize in your heart, that the serpent is dead is poison loses power to kill you because a dead serpent cannot kill you so the strength the, the strength of the poison of the serpent is your belief that it's alive you have to believe that on the cross he say he triumphed of the cross made an open spectacle of the devil in first Corinthians 2 1 to 4 Paul say I have decided to know nothing unless Christ crucified you have not yet seen this thing you are still begging God to heal you. You don't yet know that on the cross, sickness died. You don't know on the cross. He said, 
He said he took the other, nailing them. Do you know the triumph of the cross? You think the cross is something you wear your nice jeans and t-shirt, you put cross to me younger. You think cross is for style? The cross is the symbol of the victory of Christians over Satan. That is the place. Ah, yeah. Do you know that when Jesus came, Satan told him, he said, come, take all the kingdoms of the world. You know why? He was avoiding for Jesus to go to the cross. Because he knew that on the cross, Colossians 2, 3, 13, 14 says, he triumphed over them on the cross. He destroyed Satan on the cross. So God is saying, yes, in your leg, there is arthritis. In your, your stomach, gastric. In this side, pain. God said, forget all these snakes bite you. If you can see that Jesus died for you, that snake is dead. But can you see it? Why do you want to be deceived? Why do you want to be manipulated? When will you open your eyes and say, of a true Jesus died for me? Listen to me. People who are sick and beg and beg to be healed, they often die. They violent take. Those who see. Now look at this. Why? I want to ask you. How come the same serpent that was biting people and they died, the same serpent beat another person and did not die? The same poison that killed your brother does not kill you. They shall pick up serpents. They shall drink poison. It will not harm them. Why? Because they live in the realm of the triumph of the cross. Where they know that on that cross, sickness died. Poverty died. Witches died. When will you believe? I as a prof pastor, I have issue believing this thing. So you come to church. There are 10,000 people. I must not lay hands on 10,000 people. All I have to do is to come in a service and lift him. Once I lift up Christ, whoever looks, it doesn't matter what we're sitting in the overflow. Whoever can hear what I preach in Galatians 3 1, he said, Oh, foolish Galatians, before whose eyes Christ was clearly portrayed crucified. It means by the preaching of the gospel, the Holy Spirit draws an image of Christ in the minds of men. Is, is because I don't know what I can explain. You want to walk by the flesh. No, but the snake is biting me. Don't complain. Look at that on the cross. It doesn't matter the report. It doesn't matter how you feel. The snake bites them. They feel the pain through true pain. You see through true poison enter you. You see people who died because of the poison. The God says, don't fear the serpent. Don't fear the poison. Look at the cross. That's the gospel. Look at the cross. Look at the cross. Oh no, God, I gave it to my child. My child cannot walk. Look at the cross. And the doctor said, look at the cross. They look at the cross. Look at the cross. Look, that is the junction of destiny. Look at the cross. Look at the cross. It's where the sinners become saints. Look at the cross. Where the sick become healthy. Look at the cross. Where the poor become princes. Look at the cross. Not at the serpent biting you. Look at the Christ on the cross. Christ crucified. Christ in me. The hope of glory. Have you believed the gospel? I tell him stories of my, in my father's house. Women don't marry. Look at the cross. You want a pastor that will come and tell your trouble? Say, yes, sir. That's why they suffer. Those messages don't save you. So now, many of us pastors, we come to church. You know what we do? We begin to describe the serpents. The mystery of the blue viper. The mystery of the black mamba. Now, then after we, we analyze the poison. Now, if a viper bites you, the poison, Jesus... God say, forget the snake and the poison. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them. She's a prostitute. Tell her about Jesus. Jesus can save her from prostitution. He is a thief. Tell him about Jesus. Forget the serpent. Don't describe the serpent. Don't analyze the poison. Reveal Jesus Christ. They will be saved. He saves all manner of people. He raises the dead. He heals the sick. Do you know Jesus Christ? Do you know him? Have you seen him? When you're only interested in about your problems, when you're offended that you came to church and they did not prophesy, you're offended with the man of God for not calling your case. When the man of God came and lifted Christ, no matter the serpent biting you, what I preach is enough to handle it. If the message is not enough, anointing water will not be enough. Anointing oil will not be enough. Anointing engagement will not be enough. Even the laying on my hands will not be enough. The gospel is the power unto salvation. So I began to ask the Lord, what
what is the beauty of your cross? What, what kind of mystery is this? That you can take what you look at the dead snake and they leave? It's all about your faith. The more you are thinking, in my family, people are there are 40 years, you are chatting dead to yourself. You say, forget what, how many people the poison has killed. To, to work with God, you must close your ear to the well. Forget what people are saying. One thing, I, Paul said, I have decided to know only one thing, only the cross of Christ. I don't want to know who died, what went here, what went here. Don't travel low. People are down the road. I can't die. It's, I don't want to hear those stories. I believe one thing. Christ crucified. And him only. My Savior. My Lord. Don't you see? On Christ the soul, lead rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. My hope is built on nothingness. The Jesus blood and righteousness. I dare not trust. The, the sweetest frame but holy name of oh, Jesus name on oh, Christ the Son lead all the stand all of the ground is singing sound all of the ground is Christ the song. favor her she built on a rock that same wind that broke your business came to your friend's business it didn't break his business are you building on the sun to build on the sun means to build on your emotion the way you feel i don't feel like praying i don't feel as if god loved me no it's by faith not by feeling i don't feel to build on the sun means to build on the opinion of men people are saying that i'm good for nothing people are saying people are saying what kind of life is people are saying people create you the people die for you. The people save you. People are saying, people are saying, building on the sun. To build on the sun means to build on your ambitions. I want to be this in life. I want to be, it's always you. But to build on the rock, he said, he that heareth my words and keepeth them. Stop being afraid. I want to tell you something. And please don't misunderstand me. You cannot pray for the wind not to come the wind will come. All you can do to secure yourself from the wind is to build on the rock. One day you may wake up and there is a growth on your body. What? I mean, this thing does not come because you are bad. Job did not plan for a wind to come. Yes, sir. One day you woke up. He buried ten children. It's not because you are a bad man. The wind is a tester, a revealer of the secret content of the hearts of men. The wind came. It can be a wind of disappointment, a wind of poverty, a wind of affliction, where everyone around you turns against you. You don't know what you have done. It's a wind. But the Bible says, and the wind came and went. It came to pass. But no, it's not yes. I pray that it should not pass with you. Because when the wind left, the, the first man's house had finished. The wind went, and that man was standing. 
a house a man built for over 30 years in five minutes a wind crumble it have you not seen marriages for 40 years they wake up and divorce a wind for one week destroy a marriage for 40 years do not assume don't take chances build on the rock don't think you are too anointed I've seen anointed men cry I too have cried don't think you have reached a level beyond temptation forget that thing I beg you from my heart build on the rock don't build on your emotion don't look for God in your dreams don't look for God in your feeling look for God in the Bible look for him where you will find him thou searchest the scripture thinking that by this you have life and this scripture testify of me the scripture stop panicking what do you think your children will die have you not read that the righteous man shall see his children's children maybe, listen maybe because you didn't build on the rock you are afraid you will never see the grave of your children and you will see your children's children it's not prophet Kevin that said so it's, it's the Bible I'm just telling you the Bible Psalm 127 is in the Bible what are you building on? building on feeling that being emotional you come to church tomorrow you don't come to church why are you joking like that with your life? do you know that the salvation of your family depends on your seriousness with God? Well, I, I, next, I know I pray today don't be he said he that that is like the wave of the sea tossed to and fro by the wind deal on the rock God say it doesn't matter the serpent biting you whether it's which kind of sickness whether it's which kind of demon is there a sickness you cannot heal answer me is there a body you cannot carry did he not say come to me all of you how many of you what will I give you do you know Jesus or do you know your papa? Do you know Jesus? Are you afraid? We have come with, with open hearts. Oh, oh let the ancient world I said, We have come with, with open hearts. I have come with an open heart. Oh, let the ancient world and ask the Lord what name fits you. And, and he, he said, said yeah. Yeah. sit down. How I wish we can go back to the days where we were going to church innocently in Sunday school. It was not complicated. We we'll sing simple songs. There is abundant life. In Jesus, if we, we had an innocent, just believe Him that He can do it, that He is all sufficient. But now, our days, Jesus is no more sufficient. Oh, Son of Man, why have you kept your feet? Peter said, Don't you care if we perish? He asked him, He said, Why is it you are so afraid? Where is your feet? Where? There is something about Jesus. Whether it's a black viper, a blue viper, a green mamba, he says, look at the cross. Look at the faithful one that died for you. Full of mercy and compassion. He said, I am he that was dead and behold of my life. I am he that is, that was and is to come. The almighty, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. The amen of God. The true and faithful witness, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the firstborn from the dead, the first fruit of Zion, the author and finisher of our faith, the Savior to the uttermost, the one that walks in the midst of the seven lampstand. Baruch Abba Hashem Adonai.
want to believe, we should close this church. This is not a jangly house. This is not a drama we're acting. We should not waste our time. But if we should come to church, we should make sure 100% is Jesus. Prepare to live for him as to die for him. Prepare for everything for him. Because I have believed. I have not believed in vain. I didn't believe in a film trick. I didn't believe on one people who people put on a picture, one man with long hair and red lipstick. Jesus is not that man you are put on a picture you buy on the market. They don't sell his picture on any market. All those people you ask, go and remove all those pictures in your house. You are entering idol worship. That's not Jesus. Jesus is the word. You see the Bible in your hand? That is Jesus. That Bible in your hand? That is Jesus. Not that picture. Don't go and pray to any picture. Don't pray to any statue. But open the Bible. Take the words and pray. And you see your God walk, move mightily. Oh, the psalm is sang. Jesus is alive forever. He's alive. Jesus is alive forever. forever. He's, He's alive. alive. Amen. Number two, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I practically explained everything already, so I'm just talking now. Romans 1 16 17. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The angel said to Peter, to, to Cornelius, he said, call for Peter, oh God, give me Acts eleven fourteen. He will tell you words by which you will be saved. Prophet Kevin is telling you words by which you will be saved. These words I'm giving now. Yeah. Oh God, open their eyes that they may see. Verse 13, please. And he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house we said to him send men to Joppa and call for Simon whose son name is Peter go ahead what will he do who will tell you words by which you will be saved who will give you oil by which you will be saved who will give you anger cheap by which you will be saved who will give you water by which you will be saved water can heal Oil can be a vessel for healing, but salvation. He said, We'll tell you what. So, so, this thing we preach, you do not understand. There are people that the devil planned to kill today, he can't kill them again. You know why? They help me preach words that can save. Oh, don't despise this thing we are doing. Sometimes I'm, as, I'm sad when a pastor will say, We had service, uh, they, they preach, and we close. They say, Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Preaching the gospel is nothing. You think you was for and just break before power was there. He didn't say the gospel is powerful. He said the gospel is the power. People are caught up in immorality. As I'm preaching, the chains are breaking. I'm no longer a slave to see. For I am a child of God. People are caught up in adultery, caught up in bitterness, but as they hear the gospel, the chains are breaking. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Jesus, you break every chain, no man. You break every chain. You break every chain. It's only to hear. There are people who are caught up in all kinds of sin. I may not lay my hands on the heavy service, but I have grown in God, me, Kevin, to trust the word. I, I have a confidence that as I'm preaching, those who cancers have been healed. I have a confidence as I'm preaching, HIV leaves. I have a confidence that if you came here as a prostitute, as I'm preaching, that power leaves you. I don't need to touch you. He said, as he spoke the word, the spirit entered me.
It's the power. It is the power. It's the power unto salvation. The power that saves. It saves from sin. It saves from Satan. It saves from self. You are saved from sin. Saved from Satan. Saved from self. It is the power. It is the power. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Manda Kashagra Hida by Agidova. I heard the testimony of a man. He was diagnosed with cancer of the truth. That time he was not a Christian. A very rich man in, I think, Korea. He was diagnosed with cancer of the truth. So the man went to the house. I was watching a pastor preach on TV. And the pastor quoted um, Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 23 that says, 21 to 23 that says, Give yourself to the world, it shall be held to your flesh. He said, He began reading the Bible. He read the Bible day and night for three months. Three months he went for the next checkup to start chemotherapy. Cancer of the truth had gone. Listen, he was not a Christian, he was not going to church. He only read the Bible. When he exposed himself to the power of salvation, sickness said, I'm going, I cannot stay again. Sickness left. Don't you sing it? Demons cannot stand your name. Sickness cannot stand your name. Troubles cannot stand your name. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Afflictions cannot stand your name. Witches cannot stand your name. Troubles cannot stand your name. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Madam, do you know the most funny story in the Bible? It's a story of Jesus Christ eh? and two thieves. Jesus is crucified. <laughs> and there are two people crucified with him. Oh God. There is no story as funny as that for me in my own understanding. He is crucified. And there are two thieves that crucified with him. Oh. Bible says... One thief said, hey, if you are Christ, save yourself and save us. <laughs> the other one said, shut up. Shut up. Don't you know that we are crucified because we, we, we are killers? We, are, we did bad. He said, but this man, yeah, he said, but this man, he's innocent. Then the man said, Jesus, remember me in your kingdom. Yeah, Jesus, today. <laughs> Jesus said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. Mom, let me ask you a question now. Imagine when we get to heaven, you meet this man. You ask this man, sir, did you baptize? Oh, the man answer you. No. Sir, do you take holy communion? No. How are you in heaven? I, I don't know. Sir, come, come. Do you know the doctrine of righteousness? No, I don't know that doctrine. Uh -uh. Sir, were you in a department in a church? No. Uh -uh. Sir, did you sow seed for crusade? No. Uh -uh. Are you past take in heaven? I just believed in Jesus. <laughs> That's all. For those of you who think that your salvation is by your works, you are greatly deceived. This is a sinner being killed for his sin. And he's on the cross. Give me Luke 22, 39. He's on the cross. He said, Master, 23. He said, remember me. Jesus said, today. Was he baptized? Did he take communion? Did they, did they teach doing confirmation? He wore a white garment. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answered rebuke him saying, do you not even fear God? He's a criminal. Oh. See, you are under the same condemnation. Next thing. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. He, he justified Christ. He said, sir, you are, you are innocent. That's all. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, how did he call him? And if you shall confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. Look at how you are saved. You are not saved by baptism. I'm sorry for you. You are not saved by Holy Communion. 
You are not saved by being a member of the church. You are saved, Romans 10, 8 to 10, if you will believe in your heart that Jesus is, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you believe and confess, he said you shall be saved. If you believe and confess, this man is a drug addict. Live the life of immorality. Killing people. Stealing from them. But hear what he says. At the last minute of his life, bring it up again. He said, Lord, can I bring it up fast? Lord, he didn't say Jesus. This is the same Jesus they call me capital son. He took a criminal to see him. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now who even tells you get kingdom? Something was happening already. Verse 22. Yeah, our master. Today. It's not next year. I surely I say to you, today you'll be with me in paradise. Did this man go to a church and confess his sins? Say, I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm. All he said was, I know I'm a bad man. But Lord, remember me. Doctrine of faith, you don't know him. Doctrine of justification, you don't know him. Doctrine of sanctification, you know, we have to use big, big terms and think that it's by those big terms we are saved. He knows nothing. So I'm asking you, when we will see this man in heaven? Wait, the moment they, they come in, so he says, Why are you? I'm not on the cross. I said, Come, 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 some more. I said, You baptize, no, you swallow seed first. Hey. You take holy communion, no, uh -uh. you pay a tithe, I never ever pay tithe for my life. In fact, I'm going to church, I go thief. Eh? Wait, 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 wait. But I know say you begin to pray eight hours, kabash. I know I pray you five minutes. How you enter heaven? I believe Jesus. I finish. As he believes, the power worked. Is the power unto salvation. Demons cannot stand your name. Sickness cannot stand your name. Troubles cannot stand your name, oh Jesus, oh. Afflictions cannot stand your name. Witches cannot stand your name. Demons cannot stand your name, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Come on. Jesus, oh Jesus, rise on your feet.